you, you decide what you want to take away. But as Tony said, I've been pretty lucky to have worked in the game for a long time at the very highest level, and I want to keep doing that. Um, what I've done tonight is I've taken my experience of working in the game, not just in football, in the field of psychology, many, many years, and I'm going to share a few techniques with you to take away with you. So I don't want to talk at you all night and put anyone to sleep. I want to make sure you've got stuff to take away. Um, a lot of the stuff I'm going to share with you this evening is based on, I'm a writer, I've written books, I've got a new one out now, I've done a book signing the other day in the city, um, so give a little bit of a plug as well. So I'm, I'm going to take a lot of stuff from there and, and give you stuff that you can use along the way. I want to start off before we move forward, is I'm going to put the ball in your court. What makes a good footballer, do you think? Anybody? Who? What, what, what do you think? What, what makes a good footballer? Little. Sorry? Anybody? <laughs> yeah? Motivation. Motivation. Okay. Good footballer. Anyone? Good footballer, good football team. What are the ingredients you think of a good footballer, good football team? Good be fit, yeah? Fitness, yeah? Work hard. Yeah, work hard. Confident. Confident. Attitude. Okay, all these things help. Okay, so we can isolate these things down to a few areas. Fitness is important. If you're not fit, you're not going to get very far in the game of football. Okay, it's really important that you're physically fit to play. Uh, psychology is really important too. If your head's not on it, your game head's not there, you won't go very far in this game. You've got to be focused in football to do well. And I'll share experiences throughout the night about how important it is. Nutrition is important. Eat the right things. Okay, Tony's got his spires out, we'll see if he's at McDonald's at night time. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Yeah, a couple, yeah, a couple, yeah. yeah. There we go, yeah. So, it's really important to eat well. Skill is important in the game. Skill is really important. You're also, not just doing training on the game situation. I see many players doing training, they can't do it in the game. Technique is really important too, and tactical awareness. They're key ingredients to being successful in a game. Which one do you think is the most important thing? What do you think is the most important thing? Psychology, anybody else? Anything else? Okay, fitness, okay. okay. I mean, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. If you're going to ask me, I would say the mind is, is probably the most important. But these are all equally as important because if you haven't got one or the other, you won't go very far. Yet in saying that you play the game in here, in, here, in the mind. Psychology is not just sitting down and going through stuff with people. It's about you being in the right mindset to play the game. I'll talk to you about that as we go along. Attitude, talent. There's, there, there are two grey areas. People say to me, Jim, who do you take on board? Someone's got the right attitude or the right talent. I prefer attitude than talent. I have many, many players, many, many years, very talented, they don't get very far if they don't have the right attitude. Do we know what we mean by that? Any, any questions there to the attitude, talent? Do you think the players who are most talented always succeed? No, they don't. They don't succeed at all. Do the best teams always win the tournaments, do you think? No, they don't. And look at the last World Cup. You had teams that punched above their weight and did really, really well, and you see it all the time. Where I am in the UK, in the FA Cup, you see it all the time. Small teams will beat big teams on the day. They, they can, it's possible, to beat a big team, which is, which is important. But then that tells you a lot of times small teams. Are the players there just saving themselves for big games? Could they do better? Which is really important. So it's really important you've got the right attitude as a player. I'm not saying to, when I say attitude, I mean do the right things. Be focused, keep going, and make sure that you give the best you've got every game, every training session. Every training session you go there, my philosophy, and you'll know if you work with me, you train as you play. Simple as that. When we train, we train at intensity. Okay? I've been into teams and I've seen certain players in certain teams, you know, not train hard and then they take onto the game. And that's not a good thing. And I'll talk to you about that as we go along. I believe if you don't train 100%, you're not going to play 100%. Old habits die hard. Does that work for everybody? Get yeah, with me on that? So the key is really you're going to be out there, train 100%. You know, players that, uh, it's good having bats, I love having a laugh as well, that's fantastic, but when you train, you've got to be out there 100%. Because the brain can't think, okay, it's a game, you haven't got you know, room to be complacent in this game. The principle of success in football, otherwise like a metaphor in life for me, 
Okay, I do a lot of talks in schools, I've done a lot of work in schools, young people and, and young people doing well is really important to me, so I go into schools and do talks and football for me is a, a metaphor for life. And what I mean by that is that if you do the right things, you train hard, you work hard, you've got the right attitude, you'll do well in life too. Not everyone can be a professional footballer, it's tough. It really is hard to be a pro footballer. You know, one percent maybe make it and they don't even stay there. Everybody else is just fighting for positions really. You don't make it as a footballer, you can have a good life doing other stuff too. But these principles will, will stay with you. Okay? I see players I worked with years ago, sometimes I see them, they got good jobs, university degree, they do well, and they'll see me and say, I'm glad you told me this sort of stuff early on in life. Okay? This is really important. I believe if you sort of apply yourself in football, you can transfer the skill anywhere in life. Athletes who work really hard, you transfer it across. Really important that, that you do that, uh, which is key. It can save people the game. It can, I've seen people saved by football. That's why I'm passionate about sport. I've seen them saved by football. What I mean by that is that they could have turned to bad things, but they kept their head on the straight and narrow, really. And, and that's a good thing, really. So, you know, feel free if you want paper, pen, whatever, you can write stuff down. After you can leave your email, you want stuff you want to, and you can do it for stuff in your own time as well. Uh, I see it as a mental skills workout. You don't just do one session mentally and that's it. The reason why a lot of teams do well these days is they spend a lot of time in here. Mental skills training. They work on it over and over again. Do you get in good shape doing one session? Anybody? You do one training session and you're in great shape? No, you've got to keep doing it. Do you eat one good meal and you transform your health? No, you've got to keep eating well. So the same goes for, for mental skills. You've got to keep doing it. It's got to keep going. Really important. Is anybody prepared mentally for games? Anybody? Who prepares mentally for games? Okay. Some people do. Okay. Some people do. Some people don't. Okay. I'm going to sort of talk about what we mean by mental preparation for games, which is, which is really important to do that. I'll give you an example, okay? Just to share. I've got a few examples I'm going to use tonight. Not a great deal because not much time. But I've sort of highlighted some key moments in my own career in the game. Okay, I'm not here to sort of like, you know, talk about what I do. That doesn't matter, it's not relevant. What matters is what I can share with you. So I'm talking about key moments about how this stuff works, okay? Many years ago, many, many years ago, before a lot of people's time now, my entry into the game was quite unique, really, as a coach, as a trainer. I had a colleague of mine who used to be the head trainer, uh, head conditioning coach at Crystal Palace, that just got moved into the Premiership. And he took me on board to run his training centre. In his training centre, a lot of professional footballers went there uh, from different clubs, QPR, West Ham. We had, um, obviously, Palace as well, different players from different teams. Not all of them, but some did. And he asked me to take a few players under his wing. One player he said, can you take under your wing, was a lad called Nash. Uh, he had a good career in football. He'd been in non-league football, and he got into the Premiership. He was at Clivera, I think. I stand correct, it was in non-league, and he had a few, uh, not going to say issues, but his confidence from non-league going to the Premiership was a big thing. And I used to train him every week, do physical sessions with him in the gym, and six months into the training he said to me, Jim, you're a psychologist, you want me to start doing psychology? He didn't realise all that time, that's what we were doing. <laughs> and, and Exactly, so there you go. And, and you know, he had a good career for himself, he worked in the Premiership for many, many years, he's been at City, uh, we're going to think as well, I don't know, Everton as well, or everywhere really. I'm not putting it down to me, I'm not saying it was because of me he did that, yet in saying that I'm sure it didn't do any harm to have someone like me in that staff environment to talk to him along the way, because I'd pick up on things, you know. So that's what I'm saying psychology is not just about you um, psychologically, you know, sitting down doing exercises and that sort of stuff, it's just the way you communicate with people. And that's the way I would communicate to him, and I'll share some stuff that I would do along the way, really. And I suppose from there, really, my own career um, and dealing with other individual players would start to move forward and, and we'd go from there. But I'm not going to go into too many details of time. I had a break in the game for a bit, as you do. My entry back in the game was when a colleague of mine asked me if I could join him. It was very football club, they were going to shut the youth team down. and. Um, Chris used to play for United, said, Chris Captain played for United, he said to me, do you fancy coming on board with us? I said, okay, I'll join you, but I want to keep it low-key. 
Okay, I'd made a big name for myself in football earlier, but I had a break for three, four years for one reason or the other. I said, I don't want, I just want to keep myself low key uh, and, I'll, and I'll do it. And he said, they're going to dismember the youth team. I said, okay. So we got together and we changed the youth team, bit by bit. Okay, uh, we've been a couple of seasons we're producing players like, like Nugent, who plays at Leicester now. Nugent, no Nugent? Okay, you've probably seen him at Leicester. Because in reasons, I'll talk about his story shortly. And a lot of other players will punch it above our weight. For a League 2 team, we're producing more than Premiership teams. Okay, and we did that by studying people and what they were doing as well, which was key. Um, it's funny because the, the story behind Kazim Richards, who, when he came to Bury, he was released, I think, from Arsenal and West Ham. Nobody wanted him, from what I understand. And his dad found that very same. We'll drop down a few leagues, but he's in good hands with you guys. Can you do see what you can do? It's ironic, really, that when I came to Australia um, a while ago, it was one evening where a lad in the seminar I was doing had come and seen me in the UK. He's a coach. He's doing well now as a coach, by the way. And he says, tell him a story about Colin. Now, the reason I mention him is that Colin was the sort of lad that he had a few issues. He was quite troublesome, to be fair, if I'm honest. But he's saying he had a lot of talent. And we managed to sort of get that talent out of him. Nobody wanted to touch him. No club wanted to touch him. From what I understand, we took him on board. Don't get me wrong, we did a handful for us along the way, but ironically, when I came to Australia in the seminar, the lad who was at the seminar, he was in the UK, he says, mention Colin to the group. And I said, why is that? Um, why, why, why him of all people? He goes, because he's playing tonight. I said, who's he playing for? He goes, fan of action, Champions League against Chelsea. And they watched it, the lads, and he scored the winning goal. And after that, I was doing media stuff in Austria, Switzerland, European Cup 2008, and it dawned on me he was playing. His mum was Turkish, he chose to play for Turkey in the end, and, and basically was playing international football. He'd risen from the fourth tier to international football, Champions League. Incredible. Because if nobody wants it. Imagine nobody wants as a player, you can't find anybody, you have a few issues and that sort of stuff, nobody wants to take you on board, and then in three or four years' time, what well, you can do. How could I compare that thing to the football hierarchy here? Maybe by playing state league three and then going on to, to be the top player in the A-League type thing and, and, and going to represent, I don't know, a national team. But, but bigger than that, because at the end of the day, he played obviously in Champions League. He's got this right now, I think he is. So it shows, if you sort of focus, you can do stuff, which is really important. I, I had my run-ins with him, I'll be honest, along the way, yet in saying that my experience of <coughs> psychology and working with people over many, many years in psychology um, helped a lot. Um, those of you who don't know, uh, my background's in therapy and psychology, and I spent a long time working with high risk defenders, the worst three percent in the UK, and that's where a lot of my experience of dealing with people came. To be fair, I didn't realise when I was doing that, but it would help me along the way. So that's a little bit of a story for me. So I say to people, the danger is you aim too low. Colin aimed high, by the way. He believed in the soul. People used to sometimes take the Mickey out of him. Colin, you can't, you know, play the highest level, but he did. So I say to you, aim high. If you aim high and you fall short, better that way, isn't it? You know, that's the key, I think, in life. Aim high rather than just being covered up and be complacent. Okay. Then after being in the youth team at Bury, the next step for me was the first team with 10 points, bottom of the league, gone. They resigned themselves to get relegated. And it was at that time there, um, you know, Chris says to me, can you join us in the first team? He's got the first team job. I said, well, I'll, I'll do it. And we went on a run. We went on a run and we stayed up. But the only we stayed up it was, it was quite unique, really, because we sold our best players to keep the club afloat as well. And it was a uh, surprise a lot of people, but it was drawing a lot of attention to what we were doing. Because obviously we achieved a lot. When I left Barry, uh, we knocked some of that in the League Cup. Sunderland Football Club, and, and that was it for me. I'd move on to different things, as, as you do. But it was a big part of, of my career, really, in terms of re-establishing myself. And I think the biggest thing was really to go into a club with no resources and do what you do, really. So the key is really to take some of these skills to, to move forward and, and punch above your weight, which is important. Um, that's me as a conditioning coach. There we go, I used to be. <laughs> and I've used a lot of conditioning work. Okay, a lot of stuff that you guys do um, with, with Tony, which is great stuff, the plyometrics, the fast speed, all that sort of stuff really. We were, behind, we were ahead of our time really, miles ahead. We were doing stuff in, in, in the game that people are doing now, miles ahead of everybody else. 
okay? And that's what we're doing out there. So we change that. We change the really like fast speed, plyometrics, all that sort of stuff where it's really important. Underpinning with physical stuff, okay? Um, I was affiliated with universities. We were getting links with unis to get the best out of the labs. Well, they couldn't afford things like game break and study the players and fitness testing. So I'd, I'd hook up with stuff at uni, um, Manchester Uni, Bolton Uni, and I'd get stuff like this done. And all this is really is a graph. When we play Everton, I want to know how different were our players to, to their players. Their premiership players, I put a heart rate on their key players, and I put a heart rate on our players. I want to see the difference in heart rate. And when something really interesting happened, I noticed for 90 minutes, their players, heart rate didn't go anywhere near as high as ours. So what that means is our players were exerting themselves a lot more. Is it nature, nurture? I don't know. But it was really interesting really to find out that, you know what, the higher you go, the more they're athletes. So that sort of made me think, you know what, we've got to get these guys in shape as much as we can do, things like that, really. you learn along the way, um, which is important. You can have like a copy of that if you want, by the way. Okay, um, people talk about black man. The thing behind that really, that was probably the first time I went to after Barry, only surely because I was good friends with the sports scientist, Strodick, who's at United now as a head sports scientist, and they struggled that season under Mark Hughes, and he'd asked me to come in. I did some NLP stuff, really, and then we turned the season around. We played, they, they made Europe after doing NLP, and um, they also made the semi-final FA Cup and lost to, to Chelsea. But I don't like to go on about it too much, really, because you know, at the end of the day, I, I don't see it as as, as an individual thing. It's about the team, about the players, really. But you know, it was good to go in and, and do. We've kept in touch, obviously. You know, even though he's at United now, oh, not not so much the last two years or so. But, but when you first moved, we kept in touch, and we sort of bounce ideas off each other, as you do. But having been in the game for a long time, you make a lot of friends, you know, and, and they're all out there as, as you do type things. Okay. When I went to Accrington, the same situation from the Berry where they were behind, they had to win every game, the last 10 games, 8 or 9 games, and we managed to do that and stay up as well, which was a different ball game. And I mentioned Accrington because when I first went there, they were very hard work. The reason they asked me to go in there is that they used to be a non-league team, they went league football, and the players still had that non-league mentality. I remember my first session at Accrington, you know, and, and I knew they had to win 9 games, I think out of 10, my first session at I thought, what am I doing in here? You know, they're behaving like a bunch of 12-year-old school kids. Not that you guys have all behaved. Um, and they were hard work. And, and they had someone who'd done what I did before me. But I just took the players out. So I said, look, lads, you, you know, you, you talk, we're going to run. So I ran. And then we went back in. There was a lad in there who was hard work. Um, a Liverpool lad, Scouse lad. And we went back in the room. He started again. I took him back out again point they nearly threw up. I said, you keep doing the go back out again. So it was different to the other psychologists. I thought, flipping name, this guy's crazy. <laughs> Until actually you could hear a big jump. And we, we, we applied ourselves, 100%. The second last time we played Macclesfield, I don't even know Paul Lins, the England manager, used to be playing with the player, sorry, used to be years ago. And it was us or them. The winner sort of stayed up. The loser had to play the last game to stay up. And we, we, we beat them. But then it's funny how they got so much press because it was an England player, we got no press, but it's achieving a miracle, really. And they had money, we didn't, we didn't have no money at all to, to do what we did, really. But I talk about that story because you've got to change the mindset sometimes. So the physical and mental go hand in hand. And attitude's really big, you know. There were players in there that had the wrong attitude, they're going to go down. But I think I was just scared. That's all it was. I don't think there was any, any major issues there. They had that fear factor, um, which is not good. Does anybody set goals in the group? Who sets goals? One person sets goals, okay? A few people set goals. You know what happens if you don't set goals? Somebody else sets them for you. If you're not, they've got plans for you. <laughs> not a lot. So set your own goals. How many goals are you going to score this season? How fast are you going to run? I said before earlier about the very situation, I said to the players, set goals. Fitness testing. Run faster. Be stronger. Jump higher. All these things. Set goals. How many goals are you going to score? And every team I see, every player I see, I have a stable of players now from all teams, across the UK, every week together, we do goals. Really important that we do goals. Because if you don't have a goal, you don't know where you're going. Really important that you set goals. Not just in football, in life as well, to set targets. Why do you think people don't set goals? Anybody, why do you think they don't set goals? They're afraid. They're afraid, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they're afraid to uh, reach it, <coughs> but then you know, what's worse than that is if you stay in the comfort zone. Yes. It, it, as well, too, definitely. Sometimes people say to me, if I set goals, I always achieve the goal. I have set big goals. I'm open up sometimes, and people sometimes they criticise you for setting goals, but then so be it. That's life, isn't it? As long as you go up in the morning, you well, you go again. I'd rather have a go at something than do nothing at all. You know, some people just coach through life to do nothing, especially in football. If you don't set goals, then you're not going to get very far. You know, and I say to you, the players in, in the group, set your own goals. Where you want to play? You know, write it down where you want to play. You know, what level you want to play? How many goals you want to score every year? What you where you want to improve? When you start doing that, you start going forward. It's, it's an important process. Um, and ask the question: Are you training hard enough and smart enough? There's someone else out there training harder than you. Okay, when you're on Facebook, when you're on uh, the PlayStation, when you're, you know, drifting along, there's someone out there training hard. I'm not saying I have downtime, by the way. I'm just saying you switched on, but there's someone out there that's going to take your shirt. I've seen it before. I see it all the time. Lads think they've made it, and then someone else out there takes their shirt and they complain. I was better than him or her, or whatever. But no matter, you're better than them, but they, they've outdone you because they've outworked you. Don't get outworked. Don't let anybody outwork you, by the way. If you've got to get up at 3 in the morning, get up at 3 in the morning. You do what you've got to do. People say to me, Jim, someone owes me radio sometimes. I, I live in the North England, take me five, six hours to get to London sometimes. I've got radio opportunity. I get up at 2 o'clock, get in my car, go. People say, you're crazy, you get up at 2 in the morning, you go. I'm not going to get out of work. If there's a chance for me to do something, I'll do it. That's what we've got to do. When we used to um, work in football full time, I'd be up early, six, seven, finish midnight sometimes because I want to win. I don't want to get out of work. You won't outwork me, and nobody will outwork me anyway. If there's two people on the treadmill running with me, I'll, I'll keep running until I, I go down. That's as simple as that. And that's the philosophy you've got to have. There are better people than me as coaches, better people than me at doing what I did in terms of academically, but there wasn't going to outwork me. No chance. And, and that's what we want to bring in the team, you know? And I'm training hard enough. My athletes train hard, by the way, not just in football, my athletes in general. We, we just, we, we never say die out of two. We, we go for it, you know, no matter what. And that's why I say you've got to work hard, you know? And smart as well. Because in life there's too many excuses, you know? Too many people make excuses in life. Don't get out of work. It's really important that you get out of work. Uh, I do this every week, a weekly planner, okay? Um, the weekly planner is really important because you know what you're doing, okay? People say to me, how do you do all the things that you do? You know, you write books, you do music, you do the other, really. Your family as well, family is obviously the most important thing. Because you're playing your week. That's important. You do what you've got to do when you've got to do it. So if you're in sport, you have a diary. You know, what you, when you're doing things, I'm going to swimming pool here, I'm going to training here. What do you do on Sunday morning? If you want to go to swimming pool to get recovery training, and your friend calls you up and says, come over, we'll play PlayStation, what do you say? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You've got to look after yourself. It's all right for him or her. They don't want to be what you, you want to do. You know, what do you do on Saturday night? Your friend says, oh, you know what, we'll go out, you know, a few drinks, we'll go party. But it's all right for him or her. They don't have the ambition. And you go, and bit by bit, you lose your chance. Okay, that's why it's important you've got to stick to it. A lot of people out there are trying to sort of sidetrack you, you know? And it's really important. And then you've got your own time. You want to spend the time with your family. I'm not saying to plan all your life on the weekly planner, by the way. You know, don't end up like that. <laughs> you know, you don't end up like a, a sort of everything. But you want to know your training when you're doing what. And you've got to stick to it. That's it. You know, people say to me, when I was at school, uh, I wasn't the greatest academically at school, I'll be honest. You know, I'll be honest, I, was great. I couldn't get to university if I tried at school. But I would go to uni. I went to Loughborough Uni, the, the, the best sports uni in, 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 uh, in, in, in England, and I would end up doing like sports conditioning. I also did teacher training because I wanted it. It doesn't matter about school if you don't do well there. It is more you do well at school, but it doesn't matter. It's not the end of the world. You keep going, okay? It's really important that you've got to keep going. But you know, it was really interesting, really. I went to Loughborough University. I was about 23 at Loughborough, and they called me a mature age student. Goodness me, they called me now. <laughs> so, but I went back there, you know, and there's these like people, 17, 18, really academic, and, and, and they didn't have life experience. I was doing it, I was there, I wanted to learn. They were sat there, like, you know, messing about. I was like, I want to learn. I want to get through this course. I want to work in the premiership. I want my premiership players. They ain't going to stop me. I'm going to do what I've got to do. And that's what I say to you, you know, 
plan. Education is not just about school and university. It is important, but education is about life as well. You get, you know, this education. I see the Tony when he brings the lads to England to do what they do. They probably learn ten years what you can teach in school. Yeah, my teacher said to me once in school that in, in English that I was never going to do. I want to write books. You know, she said you'll never be able to write books. Your grammar is shocking. But she didn't take into account that I didn't. My English wasn't my first language until five, six year old. I had to drop out of school at some point. People say to me these days, oh, kids have got pressure. They've got pressure, which finally got to choose iPhone or, or Apple. <laughs> That's no disrespect, but generation before us had pressure. We had pressure. I had pressure. A 15 year old had family issues, problems, you know, not, not, not well, they not well better drop out and start working part time in factory to make ends meet. That's pressure and come back and train. So I'm saying to you, there's no excuse. You know, but why don't you don't? I went on to write books, two of their best selling books, number one. I felt like posting one back to the teacher, which is probably <laughs> passed away now. <laughs> but it's, it's the thing, you can do it. Don't let people say you can't do stuff, you know? The young people don't let people say you can't do anything. Even if someone posts to you, by the way, they don't mean harm by it, but they see it from their own point of view. You can't let someone say to you, you can't do things. You can do it, you, you apply yourself, and you plan really, really well. Which is, which is really important, you know? Um, focus is key. Okay, I ask you the question, are you focused? Think about it, are you focused? What I mean by focus is not always be full on. You don't want to be an obsession. You want to have a life. But when you've got to do what you've got to do, you've got to do it. Okay, I, I've seen players when, in, in football, when they finish training at one o'clock, you know where they go? They go play golf. They go for a drive, they go shopping, they go have fun. Which is okay, but there's other players, you know what they do? They practice their free kick, they go in the gym, they do what they've got to do. And they're the ones that improve and get there. So focus is really important in this game. You know, stay focused on what you're doing. If you're training there, you do training some turning, then you've got to focus 100 percent There's no point doing a training session thinking about what you've got to do on Saturday, what you've got to do tomorrow, you know, what that sort of stuff really. Just Keep your game head on. You'll improve, you'll go forward. When you play, you can't do nothing about certain things. There's been times when I've had big games, I've had things going on in my own life. I can't control that. I've got to be strong for the lads. Just, just think about what you've got to do for the lads, put everything else to one side. That focus is important, you know? Really important stuff. I'm going to use an example now to show you how important uh, this mental training is. Uh, he's a player, a player probably no one will know here. To give an example how this stuff works. This lad said to me, his lad said to me one year, my lad's got an issue, he's got Oswald Splatter's disease, I don't know if you know what that is, it affects the knees. If you train too much, they get sore. He goes, he's in his final year scholarship, 17 year old, can you help him, Jim? I said, well, it's not really my area. He goes, no, can you help him mentally to train? Do what you do. And they're going to do decisions about professional players. Now, this lad can't train every day which is hard when you can't train every day, you know? And I said to most do mental skills training, improve yourself while you can't train, visualize right foot, left foot, heading the ball, all that sort of stuff really. And he only trained maybe the best part of it, not, not often, but when he got better, his knees started improving. When he sort of went back on the field, he improved a lot, incredibly. He came back on the field and he improved as much as anybody else, even a contract. That might not be a great thing to get a contract for League 2 team for a lot of people, but where he was, was a massive thing. So I'm showing you how strong the mind is. I've got stuff like an email, you've emailed me on visualization, mental rehearsal, which will sort of teach you how to mentally rehearse, visualize. I've got to visualize, kicking the right foot, left foot, heading the ball, games. I remember once he says to me, he goes, oh, um, I think they're playing a little ball in the friendly, uh, and he says, um, I said, visualize playing different players you could play against. Because they might not even play. It doesn't matter if they don't play. If you sort of visualize, you're halfway there. Okay, so it's a really important tool to use. All the athletes use visualization, mental rehearsal, they all do it. And I suggest you do it for your technique and your game. Mentally rehearse. If you want more information on that, I'll send you a uh, step by step process of how to do the process of the time when I have time to go through. But it's a very important skill to do. Mentally rehearsal. Avoid distractions. 
Okay, what do I mean by that modern distractions? What are what distractions that play as a home? Women. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, I wasn't going to say women, but there's a lot of women in the group. Well, women in place. Yeah. 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 But you know, you're right, these distractions, you know, social media is a problem, isn't it? If you go on all the time. All the time social media is no good. Um, Facebook. Things like the... Just check who's on their phone. Other people on their phones, you have a look. Catch them out. Who's got their phones in their hands, boys? Anyone? Yeah, I'm taking photos. <laughs> These are the distractions that sort of end up causing you issues. For young players, more so. For any age, by the way. But young players, distractions are people who don't want what you want. And they influence you. People who want to go drinking, party every night. You don't want that. You want to do well. They want to sort of enjoy whatever, really. And that's a distraction for me. Surround yourself with people who want what you want. Don't surround yourself with people who don't want what you want because they're going to cause you issues in life. They're distractions. Uh, other distractions involve excessive amounts of time on your PlayStations, Xboxes, that sort of stuff, really. No one has ever improved playing on the Xbox. Okay, no one gets anywhere. You've got to go out there and play. You might be the European champion on your Xbox. Okay? <laughs> I like playing sometimes. I, I play with my daughter. She, she likes our football. We play sometimes. You've got to have downtime. But I'm not on there every day because you've got things to do. So I say to you, you know what? It's very easy to sort of like do that. You know, I know what really makes it really an interesting thing for me. I see it not just in this country, by the way, everywhere you now, everywhere you go, the parks. What is going on? I drove through five parks to get here, like not through the park itself, but through the parks there. And there's nobody there. Yeah. Nobody there. When I was a kid, every day, seriously, every day would be there. It's school holidays. You know, and the same in England, even worse, they're not there. I don't understand what's going on. And, and for me, all I can think of is that there's other stuff they're sort of focusing on. And it's no good. So, no. Jimmy, did you drive through Maryland or Slippery well, State? I'm over in. Um, Where? Yeah, Maryland. Yeah. Yeah. the entrance, man. Sorry. There's the entrance in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. That, that explains it. Yeah. Well, I should be able to park over there. Yeah. 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 But the point I'm trying to make is that it's good for you mentally to be able to park, you know? Like, as a young person, you know, these days, you've got to make all these conditions that you have to park in. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, I mentioned this story shortly. It's years ago we played Manchester United um, in the youth team, very youth team versus United. I saw Roy King walking about. The first thing I did is grab him to one side and chat to him to find out. You're never, never too late to learn, but never too big to learn, by the way. Really important, you know? Sometimes people think that they're, they're above, you know, whatever. And it's funny that years later when we played Sunderland, he was just about to take over as manager. So these things happen. I would ask him questions, you know, I saw him United, and he came to watch the youth team play, just asking questions, bang, 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 what do you do? Not only him, many other players on his level, but I use that example that when we played youth team there, I was like, you know, I'll ask him questions. What do you think? What do you do this? What do you do that? Whatever, really, just take notes along the way. That's how you learn in the game. That's the key um, to learning. Um, make it happen. It's key. You know, some people are, are, are dreamers, they never do nothing. You've got to go out there and force the issue. Okay? If you're young players, you're persistent. You're going to have knockbacks. Sometimes people are going to say no to you. Okay? Don't take no as permanent. Just keep going. You never know where the road will take you, yeah? Just, just keep going. You've got to make it happen. You've got to prove yourself with the coach. Sometimes it's not easy. You've got to come out of the comfort zone. You might feel a bit shy or whatever, really, to do stuff, but just force yourself. Do what you've got to do, you know? Get in there. I saw players today, by the way, we were doing that thing, uh, the, the, the sports other games, not asserting themselves. When I say that, you know, good, good, you know, brought up well, obviously, that sort of stuff, really. But what I'm saying is not pushing yourself to get in there. And you've got to do that, afraid of making mistakes. Which I know it was hot when you first came back for a bit, but I'm just saying something you've got to like, push yourself, get in there. So you make a mistake, don't worry about it. Just keep going. As a coach, I can tell you that's what they look for. You look for players who want to get on the ball. Okay? The game last night I went to watch, you know what I lacked? The game, uh, the game went, the Wanderers versus Victory game, you know what I lacked? Someone who wanted to get on the ball and control the game. Nobody did it. Nobody. Nobody said, you know what, I'm going to take this ball and, 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 and make it happen. You need an enforcer. You don't have to be the best player in the world to do that. Anyone can do that. Just get on the ball. Show for it. And if someone drop deep, make something happen out of nothing, really. Don't just wait. You see it, you know, not just the team last night, many teams, and even two of the best teams, they do it. They hide. They're scared of making mistakes. I've done it when I've played sport. You're scared. People are going to think I'm making a mistake, what am I going to do? But as a young person, you take one thing on board. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. You know, go out there and push yourself. Respect the opposition. It doesn't matter who you're playing. Have respect for the opposition. I played against teams lesser than us in terms of team sheet, but we went out and played on paper. I don't care who I'm playing. If I play under 10s and I'm playing for a Premier League team, I respect them. Because I know in the day anyone can beat anybody. Anyone can beat anybody. That's why it's the best game in the world, by the way, football. Yes. At least in my opinion. Because in football, it's a leveler. In other games, you know, you don't see it like football. But football is universal, isn't it? Anyone can play football. They'll get a ball, no matter which country you're in, you know, whether you're in you know, Africa, America, whatever, there's kids dreaming of being a top footballer in the back yard. Everyone dreams of being a footballer. Anywhere in the world. Okay, no one dreams about being around the ball a baseball player. No one dreams around the world about being a cricket player. No one dreams about these things. This is what it's all about, really, as an athlete around the world. Not this really other sports, but that's what it's all about, isn't it? I say respect your position. So when you're out there, you know, for your team, whoever you play, you can beat them. Okay? Nothing surprised me in football. We, we've done giant killings. I've been, we, we're not some out of cup, we're very league two, go much higher than us. We've been involved in giant killings as well. And we've also been slain too, at times. It's a horrible feeling when you get beat by a team who's meant to be lesser. And you have certain players switched off. Okay? Can you think about situations like anyone in those situations? You've seen games where people didn't respect the opposition and they fell down. They worry about the next game rather than the game in front of them. Anyone can beat anyone in a day. Look at the World Cup. Teams were beating other teams that were meant to be a lot bigger and better. That's, that's not good, is it? It shouldn't happen. You know, teams that went out at the World Cup, traditional teams, they didn't, they didn't apply themselves. Who would have thought in, in Italy, did Italy even go out? The reason I don't think they've gone out, they've not been mentally at the right. I can't speak, I wasn't there, I don't know the situation. I was in America at the time working, but I can only see from what I've seen. The body language is wrong. You think they won the game already. You don't see certain teams do that. You know, when, you, when I say watch teams, young people watch teams, you look at what's the German team, they won't understand anybody. Whoever they play, it's 100%. So 
So you've got to take that on board, you know? Watch top players play. Okay, you see that save by Tony today? You want to see? Which one? Yeah, which one? Yeah, which one? Yeah, which one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But watch top players, you know? It's really important to watch good players. Don't just watch them like watch them and think, you know, he's great. Watch and learn. I say to players, my players, what would you play against him or her for that matter? You know, when you watch Ronaldo, I don't just watch him and not see him in awe. Just say, if I played against him, what would I do? What would I do if I played against him? And you're never too far away from, do, from playing, by the way. Look at Tony this year, took players over to Europe, they went across to Real Madrid. Who knows what could happen in life? What if one of his play, what if one of the players he brings over does really, really well, one of their players gets injured, and they think, you know what, we'll take a gamble sign. You don't know. You just never know in life. That's what I'm saying, you've got to be switched on and think. I'll, I'll watch him and, and learn. And see what they do. And I say to the young player, when you watch these players play, think, how would I play against them? What would I do? Okay? Would I drop off? Would I do whatever? Because you see international players, you know, make big mistakes. Players that we hold up in esteem. I'm going to give you a quick example I'm not going to go about. Everyone's talking about Gerald's a player of the month now, retiring, that sort of stuff, really. I haven't seen him play a good game for a long time. Honestly, I've not seen him play a good game for a long time. I'm just speculating, that, but he hasn't. Yeah, no, it's true, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm not saying he hasn't got more than the years, but you think about it. I don't know if you watched the World Cup. I was in America when the World Cup was on. I watched a few games. I was watching one of those Uruguay play. Okay, I watched some of that game, and I saw Gerard play. Okay, and for me, for me, the, 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 the second goal, okay, it was a combination of errors, really. He's had the ball. It's gone backwards. Cahill's pushed up rather than dropped deep, but they see Suarez every week. You know, it's like you premiership players, for goodness sake, drop deep, it's no goal, you go through. That shouldn't happen. That's an international player, can't help anybody else. All I'm saying is that, you know, watch top players. They should have known. You know, it could have been prevented, really, and you knock out the World Cup because you're not thinking straight. You know, and that's what I'm saying, you watch that, think, what would you do? As a young player, just drop deep, take a few steps back. Job done, really. Okay? Um, I don't want to speak a player who's been a fantastic player for many years. You know, he's been phenomenal, really, but it just shows that no matter how good you were in the past, things creep up on you as you go along, you know? Well, you, you can't live on past glories for me. You can't do that. You know? You can't live on uh, past glory. Great performance. Really important. I told you today, some of the lads, Mark is 7 out of 10. For example, if you say I'm 7 out of 10, then why did you get the 10? Really important that you do that. Grade your performance. Because if you're not going forward, you go backwards. Okay, every game, tell yourself what you think you were out of 10. And be honest with yourself. Really important to be honest with yourself and grade yourself uh, out of 10. Really important stuff. We're going to be doing that this year with the uh, first, more of the first. Yeah. They're going to yeah. be grading themselves after every game. Definitely. It's, it's important that you do. It, it'll, it'll, it'll bring you on. And, and the things that grade yourself on, what's really important, is, is these areas here. Your speed, your dribbling, positioning, motivation, short passing, all the components in the game. That's the will that I use in my players. I say to the players, grade yourself here. I don't want to play who can just keep it right foot or left foot. You start working on the other foot. I don't want to play who can't hit the ball. You, you know, you work whatever. What happens if you're good in your What happens if you make it? Okay, what happens if you make it as a professional footballer and, and you're not just a left footed player? What will happen after a year? Two years? They've got to figure you out. Yeah, they'll figure out. And you, you, you'll just drift off, really. What you do is you work on the other foot. Okay? Unless you're a messy and <laughs> you're out as well. You work on the other foot, okay? Because then they've got to do that. You put other stuff to your game. See the best players in the world? They add stuff to their game. They always add stuff to their game along the way. Um, the best players, you watch Ronaldo play, you know, he had a lot of stuff to his game, both feet, head, you know, the, the ball back of the net. Um, all, all these players really got the ability to keep adding stuff as they go along. They don't just sit there and think, you know what, I made it. That's the end of that. We just keep adding stuff to your game, spend time improving. Really important stuff. You know, those of you playing in the UK, we tend to go play in the UK, it's important that you can head the ball really well. You can't head the ball well there, you're in trouble. Okay, because you know the ball's going to go back and forth a lot, especially in the lower league. And the lower league's a great opportunity to get your foot in the door and move your way out. 
Okay, but a lot of time the ball is spent in the air, you've got to hit the ball. So you're coming off a style of football that you want to keep the ball on the deck, from what I can see. And all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's, it's in the air all the time, and you can't hit the ball, they're going to think, what's, what's he you're doing? Not good. You know, and there's little things really that can along the way, um, which is key to, to move forward. Now, your vision, your finishing, determination, all these things really just grade yourself, you know, quietly grade yourself a few minutes. This is where I am, and then where do I want to be? And, and you'll see how fast you improve, um, which, is, which is important. Uh, this is my philosophy persistence piece resistance. It's the one who keeps going, never gives up, find a way to get over the wall, over the line. Really important stuff. Okay, this is my philosophy. I've lived by all my life. I've lived by it now. But four, seven times I'll get up eight times. Keep getting up. Okay, I've heard them all before. My career will say to me, I've got a coach in, the, in, 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 in this level, that level. We want stuff. People say, you know, you're going to do this, write books, you do whatever. You hear all the time, but you've got to keep going no matter what. And sometimes you get beat. Who likes getting beaten in the group? Anyone likes getting beaten? It's horrible, isn't it? It's horrible to taste defeat. It's the horrible, most horrible feeling when you get beat. But then you've got two choices. You either sit back and moan, or you get up and improve as you go along. And I guarantee you now, no matter who you are in the group, how good you are, how many times you do get beat, it's just a fact of life. Okay, even even with Madrid, you know, lose sometimes. Even the best teams lose sometimes, don't they? You know, everyone, it's not how good you are and who's going well, it's what you do with who's going you know, badly is important for me. Okay, believe in yourself, no matter what. I'm not saying to be arrogant, you know, think you're the best thing in the world, but it helps you believe in yourself. Okay, who comes to mind as a manager when you think of self-belief? Which manager do you think believes in themselves so much? Yeah, exactly. Do you know Mourinho wasn't a professional footballer? Wasn't a pro footballer, Mourinho. And before anyone says he had a lot of money to spend at the team of that, he never started that way. But he's got a huge self-belief. What does Mourinho call himself? Special one. Yeah, I'm not saying call yourself the special one. <laughs> but that's his belief. So he's a guy who's never played professional football. It's hard to be a professional footballer, as you well know. Imagine being a manager in the pro game. You've never played before. It's almost impossible. Yeah, but he's done that. But not only the manager, the best of his generation. Okay? The best. One more trophy than anybody. But he believes in himself. There's people who probably know more about the game than him but they don't come across that way. The key is he believes in himself. And if the player, will, how do the players respond if the coach believes in himself? How would you respond as a, as a player? Trust Yeah, exactly. If he believes, something's got to be right here. So it's key. As a player, the coach will obviously respond the same way to you. And also, you know, I used to make a point with my team at half time, I walked out of the tunnel, I used to get the players to walk out, head up, back straight, look forward, look like, you know, we played, I can play, um, it was Rochdale once with Barry, and, 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 and we were equally as tight as them, I said to the lads, you know, stand up and, and, and go out there and, and look like you're, you know, you're determined. And I remember I was working with a lad, I rushed off a few months later, he goes, we couldn't believe that your lads weren't tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so we got to their head, a little mind game to go out play. They were tired out loud, won the game, but we didn't show it. You know? That's what I'm saying, little things like that for the young players you play. Don't put your hands on the knees, stuff like that. Don't, don't like, you know, give because players do that and think, oh this guy's on his way out. You know, they see you know weaknesses there. You just gotta stay strong. You need to breathe, your hands around your head, open the airways and breathe. You know, things like that make a massive difference. Body language. I can think of one player that plays for Liverpool's got atrocious body language. Oh, come on, <laughs> <laughs> but when I used to do the media for Man City, he used to drive me mad. Okay, he's so much talent, but look at his body language. Okay, guess who it is? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not good, is it? Not good. You see, you see him. How would you feel as a teammate if you see him that way? It's good as me. You know, not a good thing, really. It's smart. Well, tell telling you about. Well. <laughs> Call him what he will, I'm not going to undermine his achievement by the way, he's done well and he shouldn't be proud of himself. But I'm saying he's not playing to his ability, I don't think. You know, players that walk around like that, for me personally, it, it's the wrong message it sends out. Wrong, wrong message. But he might turn around he's young, I don't know, but again he might have what he's got. It's his core really. But believe me, he's not going to get very far with, with that sort of attitude. You know, and that's just my opinion. I don't know him well enough to make a comment. I've only seen him on the media for Man 
at Man City for South Australia at the Miami inside for him really. But I thought the time he turned the corner by the way, but obviously you know he didn't. Okay. Um, why you want to is key. You know, you can write a list and get a chance why you want to be a pro footballer, why you want to do well. You've got to have a strong why. You've got to want it. Okay? There's got to be a why. Why? You do it for yourself, for your family, for the town you live in. You've got to have a why, okay? As, as, to, as to why you want it. That driver, you know when you get up in the morning and you see how days you think, oh, I can't be bothered, my back is sore, I've got a headache, shoulder, knee, I can't be bothered. You've got to have that motivation. The motivation to do it. Do it for yourself, but do it for people as well. Do it for your family, for your parents, for, for people around you. Have the why. Why do you think it's important to do it and have a strong why? Why do you think it's important? Why do you think it's important to do a strong why? Motivation. Yeah, the motivation is to stay motivated. When I start working in professional football full time, I set my own business up, okay? I had a strong why. People said to me, Jim, you're crazy, you left a full time job in football, really well paid to do what you do. Um, what are you doing? I said, no, I've got a strong why. I know why I want to do it. I'm motivated. But if I didn't, I didn't get up and grind and work, then my kids don't need it. I can't have that. That's, I've got to work. No matter what, I'll work. I'll do whatever it takes. Doesn't matter. And someone says to me, Jim, do you want to jump back in football? After being out of the game for a year, doing what I do, the out courses, that sort of stuff. I said, no, because I'll make it work. And he looks at me and says, oh, you know what? You're crazy. I said, listen, no matter to me. I'll drive a taxi to support my family. I don't care. It's not an ego thing. But what's important, you've got to have a why. I will make it work. And he was shocked, he was like flipping neck, you know, what are you doing? So have a strong why, you know. Have a plan. Okay, plan A goes to pot. You've got, you know, 24 or 5 more letters in the alphabet. Keep going. Enjoy the game. Some players forget why they took the game up in the first place. We love the game. That's the most important thing. You know, keep that, you know, that 12 year old in your mind forever, you know, the one that goes out and plays and loves it. You know, some people, they, they lose track. I see them play, my clients, I, even some of my clients sometimes, footballers, they forget why they started the game. You've got to make money, you fair play, you know, good luck to them, but sometimes they get too tracked up on that, it's no good. You know, so enjoy it. That's why you took it up in the first place. And I think the best players will enjoy themselves on the Sunday in the park, you know, which is really important. Stay confident. I had a DVD that was going to show, it, but I don't, can't get Wi-Fi. I can email you about how to get really, really confident. Email and send through to you. And um, that's just what I thought in the UK when I do the seminar, I told the lads who've been released that the USA is an option. I do a lot of work in the USA. If you don't make it in the UK as a professional footballer, then maybe get a scholarship. 30, 40 grand a year education paid a year. You train full time. At least at the end of it, you get a good job. Facilities are great. Their facilities, by the way, in the States at uni are probably as good as some of the premiership clubs in the UK. That's how good they are. They don't muck around with their sport over there. And, and, and I'll tell you now, they take it more seriously. They'll, they'll, they'll do, do really, really well. I guarantee you that. So I'm saying, you know, even here, for example, you don't make it as a pro and you want education paid for, think about it as an option. People do it. You know, go there, train as, 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 as an accountant, as a lawyer, as a doctor, physio, whatever, and get paid for it to do it, you know? Think, think about these things as well, by the way. Um, the ones who, like, I think I would say, are crazy enough to think they can change the world, do. You know, sometimes you just got to believe in yourself and everybody thinks otherwise. Stay humble, I say, no matter what. There's too many people go on to do well and they forget where they've come from. I will never forget where I've come from, what I've been through. Never, no matter what. Because at the end of the day, that's what sort of keeps you grounded as a person. Once you do that, it's only one way, and that's downhill. Okay, so staying humble is key for me. You've got to have an action plan. And then going forward, take some stuff away from the seminar, plan for it. Um, like I said, email me. I slag Facebook off and I'm on Flipping Facebook myself. <laughs> Two places and it's on the line. But, but no, no, we've got like Facebook page, all that sort of stuff really. You know, social media business, that sort of thing really. Email me, you know. Email me if you need anything and I'll send stuff to you. Not a problem, or if you need an email there. I've got any issues. I've got nothing to, you know, secrets to hide, whatever. If you need help, I'm more than happy to help. No problem. But I don't get back to straight away, it's because I'm busy. I will send stuff out there. Like I said before, you go on to make it. And there's no better feeling for me, you know, when I see players email me after two years saying, I took this thing away from you and I did really, really well. It's fantastic. There's, there's no better feeling in the world. Yeah. Sorry, you asked me. Yeah. Did you have a hand up? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fine. We're going to have a question and answer the match.
have to turn the lights on? Yeah, no, no, it's fine. I've got towards the end anyway, so yeah. Alright, no, I'll just um, use this. I've got a question I want to ask you. Yeah, yeah. What is, um, what obviously we say about the encroaching of the other way? Yes. And um, I just want to know what actually motivates me to pursue something like that. That's a good one. Good, good question, really. I love the game. I love sport, you know. Um, as a young person, it always was saved me, really, as a young person. That's all I could do. Yeah, I, you know, I, I couldn't do a great deal else, really. So if I didn't do sport, maybe I wouldn't be here now. And that's my passion. I want to put something back in, in the game. I was lucky enough to have made it, do my do, and, 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 and I'll never forget that. It's, it's really important. And I think that more important than me, I'll tell you what's more important than me doing this seminar, if, if, one, if, if everyone made it to pro football, are great. If one person emails me saying, you know what, I've done well, like when I was in the States recently, one lad says to me, he was at Barry with me, and he didn't make as a footballer, but he's in the States now, he's a college um, life lecturer, and he's done well for himself, and it was nice, he's got a family, fantastic, so that's, that's equally as important to me, someone who says to me, you know what, you've helped my life. It's more important than, than the pro player. I've got players send me tickets sometimes in Premier League, but it's more, more of a buzz when I see someone who's, who's sorted their life out. Because I was one of them people when I was at school that could have gone either way. I'll be honest about it. Yeah, sports saved me big time. I, I grew up, I'm originally from, I grew up in, 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 in the South West. That's why I'm back here. That's why I'm going well with these guys. Because it's, it's, it's my identity. No matter where I am, I, I don't forget where I've come from. You know, I, don't, I don't try and pretend to be, you know, from the other side of town. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thanks, but the second question is, um, obviously, growing up, you're just definitely going to be doing it. There's no one to see. Did you, you um, ever have any like, setbacks, any failures, and it's been Yeah, from, from, from day one of that setback. Yeah, from, from that? Yeah. I think from day one, you know, uh, setbacks, definitely. Like, all, all the time. I mean, injuries and all sorts, really. I probably would have, if I wanted to apply myself more, I could have probably gone as a footballer at a high level, but I, I sort of did well in different disciplines as well. But yeah, many, many setbacks. In coaching, many setbacks. It's hard, it's not easy. It was easy, everyone would do it. It's not easy, everyone, it's only a few who make it. I've had many setbacks along the way, personal setbacks too, personal life and everything else, but the one thing that's kept me going, sometimes football for me, as a coach, was my, um, my place where I could, I could have peace. <laughs> you know, whenever things were going bad, I'd turn up at the training field, it's just my place where I've got some people could understand what I mean. It was like a place of, of just, I could just really chill, to be fair. Um, but yeah, many, many setbacks along the way. It's not easy, and I'll tell you now, you'll have setbacks along the way. It's when things are going well, something's waiting for you, and bang. But that's what you've got to just keep, keep going, no matter what. That's the one thing I always had. I didn't learn that. It was just for experience, you know, life. Um, I don't think you can teach that. It's just your own desire and motivation to want to do it. Yeah, that's what I explain more about that. Anyone have anything else? A question for you. What about when parents... I'm not going to get involved. No, no, no. <laughs> question for you. Yeah. What about when parents try and live in their, kid, their kid's dreams? He was looking at me when he said that. You've seen, you've seen the pictures of my son on Facebook in Manchester City. <laughs> my friend co is at Manchester City. I bring my lad down all the time to go to train. Um, I don't know, it's hard, isn't it, as a parent? I tell you what the hardest job in the world is to be. Um, I'm not breaking news yet. Being a parent I mean, is harder than being anything in the world. Um, you parents will know what I mean. Uh, it's hard. It's not easy to get the balance, is it? You want the best for them, but on the other side of things, you don't want to push them, really. I don't know. I don't want to profess to be an expert. But you're probably better parent than me. I don't know, really. Um, I, I just say, you know what? Enjoy it. I, I told my kids to enjoy it. They've played at the Etihad. They've done well everything else really. I, I don't sort of go around talking about it too much because I don't want to pressurise them. But in saying, I'd rather they do that than, than, than do bad things really. So I'll support them as much as I can do, but you've got to get that balance, aren't you really? Um, which is just my opinion. You know, you decide how you bring up your own children, you probably do a better job than me really, but I think the more you pressurise young people, the worse it is, you know? And, and you guys, obviously, I, I know some of you support you, you, you kids like unbelievable really. If I was a youngster and I had that support, I, you know, I would have loved that really. I didn't have that support as a young person. I had to just make my own way. But, you know, yeah, give them the best you've got. I'd say definitely. They make it great. You've got a good pension scheme. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Have a question? Yeah, I've got a question for you. 
Um, I'm getting grilled here, Tony. <laughs> um, we <laughs> some players that we have, which I have a coach, when they make a mistake, you were talking about before, they put their heads down. Yes, yes. yeah. Can you elaborate more on that and why it's no good? Because the body language sends out the message, it sends out, it's, it's not a good thing. As an opposition player, you see someone head down, you kind of think, psychology. The game is all about psychology. If you lose one nil, if you play really well, the team scores, and you're going to play, how do you feel? You feel deflated, don't you? If you score and you're getting battered, how do you feel? You feel a lift. If you see someone put their head down, you think these guys are going. It lifts the opposition. So it's really important you don't send out the wrong signals, you know? Really, really important that you, you keep your head up and look forward and, and keep going, you know? Keep, keep going no matter what happens. Just, just keep that sort of level of application. Even if you win 5 you win 6 nil. You lose with 5 nil, play to the end. Don't, don't drop your head, don't go down. No matter what, that's, that's what's really, that's what I mean by that.